Don't need to Skype the world, do we? That'd be funny. Uh, This is going to be a tag team. Uh, Tom's going to go I'll, first. I'll just be tired. Okay, great. And he's going to explain two different technologies that uh, talk about waste to energy and also more efficient use of combustion technology. And he'll split up the time any way he wants. Thanks. So I'm actually representing three uh, local companies. And first, I'm going to be talking about a new engine technology, which uh, could be really important for critical infrastructure applications. These are, this is an overview of the benefits. We can get 75% reduction in NOx, which is the, the main regulated pollutant per engines. We can get 25% or greater fuel efficiency improvements, depending on the type of engine and the type of fuel. But generally, it's a 25 to 35% improvements. And a, a big big thing for this technology is that it enables flex fuel engines that can run anything from diesel to hydrogen, almost anything, not quite anything. Um, and furthermore, it has improved combustion stability between cycles. It's, it's very stable, um, especially in lean conditions. Um, this is just a sort of 20 second version of why it works. The typical internal combustion engines use this top reaction to initiate combustion. It's a reaction between the fuel and oxygen. But uh, radical-assisted engines uh, instead use this reaction on the bottom, which is uh, the reaction between the fuel and a hydroxide radical. And it turns out this second reaction is much faster, and it allows for all of these uh, benefits that I discussed. Just quickly, what we've done so far. We've done extensive testing using simulations um, for the last 10 years. And uh, we have done success successful prototype testing at Argonne National Labs in Illinois and also at um, Sonic Speed here in Maryland. And we um, are currently working on much more extensive testing on multiple engine configurations for many applications. So what is the importance of this technology? Um, the, I think the, the main importance for you guys here is going to be the, the multi-fuel operations. This means that we can make generators that can run on conventional fuels uh, during most of the year, and then in an EMP event, when fuels are unavailable, they can use alternative fuels that, we, that can generate locally which I'll be talking about next, actually. Um, but it's also important, the, the emissions uh, improvements that we've made, uh, because it allows these engines to fulfill uh, regulations and uh, become wide, uh, uh, used in widespread applications, which will help us on our way to the 20% local power generation that, that Chuck is aiming for. Okay, I'm also going to talk brief, briefly about um, energy from wastewater and sewage. Uh, basically, it's anaerobic digestion. It's a 120, roughly, year old uh, process, but it hasn't become in widespread use in the United States, although in other countries it, it is in, in use. And it has an enormous energy potential. Uh, studies have shown that 9.3% of the energy that is being used in wastewater treatment could be generated from those uh, wastewater treatment facilities. Um, and we could generate up to 12% of the U.S., the total U.S. energy demand, electricity demand. Um, a patent pending process from this, these three companies, Instant a Access Networks, Total Energy uh, Renewable Power Systems, and HCRITI. Uh, 
will produce 30% more biogas than current conventional uh, biodigesters uh, at low cost and uh, in a way that will greatly offset the cost of the systems. And it will make wastewater treatment a renewable and grid inde inde independent energy source. There's more information on this than white paper. I, I have white papers for the engines and for the wastewater treatment uh, on the tables out there. And finally, this process isn't only applicable to wastewater treatment, it's also applicable to any type of biomass. So for instance, this pig on the right here produces a lot of, bi of biomass every day that we could be turning into energy for local power generation. And uh, again, basically, this proprietary process, the basic idea of it is we are increasing the methane to carbon dioxide ratio in the resultant biogas, and it enables much greater methane harvesting from the same waste streams. And the final result is we believe we can generate 50% more electricity from biomass than current conventional systems. Very good. Thank you very much, Tom. Mm -hmm. Thomas is a new uh, engineering graduate, but working effectively with these other companies who have people have been doing this for decades, and it's great to see him, him, him work. 